Hey guys, how's it going? It is Bredrick here, bringing you the last part of the Battlefield 3 info you might want to know about. I'm sorry, but it is episode 4 of 4. This is with the interview uh, with executive producer Patrick Bach of Battlefield 3. And let's just get into it. So the gameplay in the background is from Battlefield Play for Free. And I might do a video stressing how much I enjoy that game and how much if Battlefield 3 is similar to that game, that would be crazy awesome and be awesome all around. Um, but moving on, getting back to the questions. So we are on question number 11. And question number 11 talks about how in Bad Company 2 there were kill cams. So the interviewer talks about how snipers whined about it and that other campers whined about it. Snipers aren't campers in my opinion, but people who snipe and are campers whined about it a lot. And the question was, are you keeping this feature in Battlefield 3? So Patrick says, yes, of course we're going to keep this in Battlefield 3 as it eliminates campers, basically. He said that we still think that some kind of giveaway camera, no matter what it is, is something that you should be able to have. Uh, he also talks about that they might be able to have a mode where it's turned off. So it's basically like a hardcore mode or something like that. Something similar where there's not a lot of HUD features. But he ends his answer with a nice little, nice little give to the snipers and the campers out there. He says, if you're a good sniper or a good player, you know that you're now on camera once you've killed someone. So you have to move and you have to adjust and you can't just sit there and snipe the whole game. I like how he answered that question. But moving on to question number 12. He talks about how the jets are coming back into Battlefield 3. How are the maps going to give room to maneuver with these big old vehicles? So Patrick Box simply states, we're building bigger maps. That's, that's just how it's going to be because in reality... A Mach 2 jet is going to fly over one of their maps in 0.2 seconds, and so they need to adjust map size as well as the Mach 2 jet plane speed, as well as like helicopter speed and uh, rover speed and like Humvee speed and all that to accommodate, you know, the map size as well as getting around the map and not having to take a thousand hours if you're in a Humvee versus 0.2 seconds if you're in a Mach 2 jet. So they're just basically working their way around the vehicles, trying to get them to fit perfectly in the maps. And Patrick also says that, of course, there should always be a way of countering something. That's just how he ends his answer. I don't know why. It just I think it's funny how he always talks about countering. Um, that is one of the selling points of Battlefield, though, is that it's a very counter-friendly game, and that it's more strategic than, let's say, Call of Duty. I mean, let's just face it. Call of Duty, Famous. AK-74U, you destroy. So moving on to question number 13, it talks about how Prone is coming back into the series as well. So if you didn't know Jets and Prone are coming back into Battlefield 3, now you know. So the question was, why the change of heart from Bad Company 2, for which you defended your reason and you left it out of the game? So Patrick says, Bad Company 2 was the spin-off of the Battlefield series. So for Battlefield 3, the direct sequel to Battlefield 2, they need to go back to Battlefield 2 and base their game off of that. They can't base their game off of Bad Company 2, because that was sort of a side assignment. He also talks about how Prone offers a lot of ways to camp and hide in high grass. So he reassures us that there's going to be ways of countering that. So they have muzzle flashes and vapor traces and other tools to spot players. Um, probably like the spotting tool in Bad Company 2. So he's just reassuring that prone isn't going to be that big of an issue because there's going to be ways of countering it. Ah, oh, gosh, all the countering makes me want to play it. Um, so moving on to our final question, question number 14 of the interview. Bad Company 2 multiplayer basically had a lot of small chokes and the there was there weren't many open spaces in Bad Company 2. But with the Vietnam Expansion Pack, there were a lot more open spaces, and it felt much more like a Battlefield game instead of like a spin-off, like Patrick said before. And the question was, what approach are you adopting for Battlefield 3? So they wanted to really know, are they sticking with the Battlefield, or are they sticking with the Bad Company 2, smaller maps and more chokes and less open fields, or is it going to be much more like a Battlefield 2 type of game? So Patrick answers with a, we want to show people that we can build whatever we want. And that's sort of why they did that with Bad Company 2. They had smaller maps, they had narrower chokes in Bad Company 2 than the Vietnam Expansion Pack. So they just wanted to show that they can basically do whatever they want. 
and they just wanted to show that there's variation and that they didn't want to keep all the maps the same, have narrow chokes, and basically feel like you're playing the same game over again. They wanted to mix it up, new experience, bigger open spaces, so you had to adjust, maybe hide in the grass a little bit more, stuff like that. So he didn't actually talk about Battlefield 3 in his answer, which was actually the question. The question was asking about Battlefield 3, but he didn't talk about it. He only talked about how Battlefield 2 had a lot of maps that were urban, but had, at the same time were very open. Um, he talked about how Vietnam Expansion Pack was more of a way to show variation in the maps, but he never talked about Battlefield 3 in specific. So all I can really go off of is my intuition. I feel like Battlefield 3 is going to be a lot more open. Like, there's going to be a lot more open spaces, a lot more spaces to run around in, a very big maps, as Patrick said before. I'm thinking this because 64 people on PC, you can't really have narrow chokes and sort of tight spaces in a map. You need to have open spaces so that people can run around, people can be in tanks, be in Humvees, do whatever they want, you know, do whatever they please. But at the same time, they have to keep it constrained for console, because console doesn't have 64 players. Not nearly as much, maybe even half would be the max. And so it's sort of hard to decide what they're going to have. I'm still thinking open spaces, because I really liked Battlefield 2 and the open spaces they had in those maps. Basically, most of the streets were four car lengths in width. And that was pretty crazy. I mean, you'd run down the street, see some guy shooting at you, you would, you know, keep running, and then jump crouch or jump prone into, like, behind a wall. So I'm really hoping that they bring back open spaces to Battlefield 3, I really enjoyed them, but once again, he said they can do whatever they want, reassuring us that they are in control and that they are going to put a lot of variation into the maps, and they're not going to be all the same. So thank you all for watching this series. I will be posting other videos on Battlefield 3 when the time arises, when there's something new. I'm also going to be, going to be doing a couple videos on the Battlefield Play for Free. Um, so I'm Bread and Chicken, and I'm out. Peace.